Well, she was skeletonized, as I understand it. She was out in the elements for three months. But things like uh, fingernails could survive. I've seen skeletons come in with no flesh, but the nails are still there. There could be something under those nails. Hair survives a, a remarkably long time, so there could have been hair recovered. Those are only possibilities. I'm only speculating that that's the kind of thing that could have been recovered from her remains. At the time, it would have meant nothing if they had no one to whom to compare it. Even if they'd had DNA, you have to have someone to whom to compare it. And Kathy, why wasn't any cause of death ever determined? If only bones remain, you can analyze damage to the bones. You can look for bullet entrance holes or exit. You can look at blunt instrument trauma. You can look at sharp <coughs> wound trauma. You can look at fracturing in a little bone in the neck, which suggests strangulation. If there's none of that present, then you don't have any evidence about what it is that caused the death. It could have been a blow to the belly. It could have been something that only impacted soft tissue. It could have been strangulation in a very young person. The wings of the hyoid bone are still quite flexible, and your hyoid bone might not fracture even in strangulation. Uh, Kimberly, I want to bring you in because you believe that the pattern of what police have presented so far points to that of a serial killer. Why? I do. We don't know at this point what evidence prosecutors have linking Matthews to Graham. What we do know is that he was the last person seen with her. We, what we're learning about Matthews and what is unfolding does not look good. We know back in 2002 he was uh, at least accused of sexual assault. In 2005, he's been linked to kidnapping and sexual assault. Now 2009, kidnapping, sexual assault, and murder. There is clearly a pattern. And when we talk about what is a serial killer, it is a person that kills two or more people over the span of a month, taking a break, a cooling off period in between the murders. These people typically kill for some sort of psychological gratification oftentimes simply for the thrill of the kill, but they also have a common pattern in how they attempt or actually carry out their murders, and their victims are also oftentimes common. They have common characteristics. And as we look at what is unfolding in this case, we see these young girls, the ages of 18 to 20, all in the same area of Virginia. They look similar. Uh, the circumstances where the girls are lost and maybe looking for help are similar. So there's lots of indicators here pointing to the fact that Matthews very well could be a serial killer. Kimberly, 